at the Indiana Regional Medical Center and uh, available both at the Blairsville office at the uh, IRMC at Chestnut Ridge and in Punxsutawney, too. Kayla, good morning to you. Good morning, Indiana. How are you? It's good to have you with us. Really good to have you with us. Our conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. So I framed the question, Kayla. How come I have to pay attention to my skin in the wintertime, too? Yeah, so not only in the wintertime, it's kind of all the time. I mean, let's really think about it. What's the first thing you see in the morning when you get up? It's your skin, right? It's your face. What's the first thing that you see or what somebody else sees when they look at you? It's your skin. The first thing they go to is your forehead, your face, all that kind of stuff. So in general, you want to take care of your skin. But as for the winter, why should you care? So these are the brutal months, not only because of the weather, but, you know, the cold really does take a toll on your skin, wind chill, that kind of stuff. So what it likes to do, it likes to dry it out and irritate it. So in the wintertime, we like to say, you know, say heavy on moisturizers, chapsticks. Some of our favorites, honestly, are not even chapsticks that you buy over the counter. Um, Doc and I personally like Aquaphor ointment or Vaseline that you can get that's much cheaper than some of the little tubes. Uh Moisturizers, um, you want to aim for the ones that have ceramides in it. You can look at those on the labels. Some common ones that we like are CeraVe, Eucerin, and those big boys. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that we should have in our cabinets, right? Absolutely. And you want to aim for the creams and you don't want to aim for the lotions because what most people don't know is there's actually a difference between them. So the creams are heavier and they're oily based. So that actually goes deeper down into your skin and really helps with that dryness. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. See, that's one I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that one at all. And, of course, in the wintertime with that bright snow out there, when the sun hits it, uh, it really intensifies, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, even in the summertime, too, we always talk about staying out of the sun because, you know, rays from the sun do more damage than good, even though it makes you look pretty uh, when you're nice and tan and bronze. And 20. And yeah, Exactly. <laughs> but overall, like, you know, those rays from the sun really penetrate deeper in the skin where you're actually at the level where the skin is made of billions of cells and billions of cells have DNA, as most people probably heard of, or RNA. And when you constantly are exposed to that, it actually damages that DNA or RNA, which can cause cancer or which can cause precancerous lesions like actinic keratosis or just general skin damage. Mm -hmm. So like that tanness that women see to their skin, that's constant and just not in the summertime or that redness that men see to their skin. I mean, obviously men can have tanness or redness too, and same with women. But a lot of people, you know, they see those things and they ask about them, like what we can do. And there's definitely things that we can do. Um, Another big thing are those little tan spots that you have all over your skin. Mm -hmm. People like to call them age spots, but really they're sunspots. So it's very important to get ahead of those soon because I have women ask me, what do I do about these? What can I do about (laughs) them? Stay out of the sun. That's normally your answer or wear sunscreens. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're making me want to hide my face. It's okay. You look great. Cover it off here. (laughs) Uh, because I have skin is different person to person. Right. All numbers of factors. Um, I come from a family of redheaded, freckle faced Irish people. Yeah. So I know I'm in trouble right from the start. You are absolutely in trouble. I'm yeah. Covered with freckles, and I always have been my entire life. <laughs> right. Uh, right. The different skin types require different approaches, don't they? To absolutely. So somebody that's super fair skin, we go by what's called a Fitzpatrick scale. So the palest is like you know that like very white, you know, normally associated with the redheads and freckles. And then you go to somebody that's darker or that's African-American, you treat them very differently than what you treat a fair person. And then we have all those people that's in between, like myself, that breaks down in the different levels as well, which obviously um, changes your treatment plan. But overall, it's very, very, you know, each patient plan is different to each patient. So it's not like I can treat you the same as I would treat myself or the same I would treat a 30-year-old. Mm-hmm. It's very, very different per each person. And the degree of damage that you have suffered before you make that initial visit to the yeah. to the dermatologist is really going to set a path for you, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, here's my classic line I hear from patients. I'm like, okay, what, what was your sun exposure like as a child? They're like, Pfft. I was always out in the sun and let me guess, you never wore sunscreens. They're like, honey, I wore baby oil. (laughs) I'm like, I literally hear that every single time. So obviously, you know, 50 years ago, 60 years ago, we didn't really understand how damaging the sun really is. Because like I said, we like it. It's heat. It's nice. You get tan. You look pretty. All that kind of stuff. Once again, what does the skin come down to? Your appearance is the first thing that people see. It's the first thing that you see. 
But when you start those habits early on, you set that trail for the rest of your life. Yeah. So the people that are coming in with precancerous lesions on their face and those look like white flaky things that are red that you just keep picking off your face that always come back. Um, those were damaged probably 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. So now they're just coming in, but it all adds up over the years. So from a child to young adult, to your adult years, to your, you know, as you become a senior, all that kind of stuff, it really does add up. Every year in December, I go back for my derm visit and, mm -hmm. and I walk out of there and I've been assaulted by liquid nitrogen. Uh, and, <laughs> it's my uh, life. <laughs> and and for two weeks after that, I look like uh, I'm, I'm 15 years old again because yeah. I'm just completely blistered. Right, uh, right. Uh, and it, it's face, it's arms, it's chest. It's uh, everywhere. Everywhere, mm -hmm. everywhere on your body. Uh, and, and those are the sorts of things that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. When should people begin to see a dermatologist? Honestly, I would say get them in there young, your pediatrician with your kids or even, you know, when you're young as a teenager and can come yourself basically driving, um, they'll be like, oh, you got to go get these moles checked out or oh, there's just things that you can be doing. So dermatology, there's really no set age. I see anywhere from literally 18 months old or younger mm -hmm. to the whole way up to I think I've seen a 101 year old. You know, it's just very, very different. Everybody comes in for different reasons now. I would recommend a baseline exam to anyone. So starting at any age, get your moles checked, to get your skin evaluated. It's just very, very important. Um, as for the people that have a history of cancer, if they've been diagnosed with skin cancer in the past, they really need to see me yearly. Now, if they have a history of melanoma, that's a different story. Because as we know, melanoma is the most aggressive and quite frankly, the most scariest skin cancer. Mm -hmm. So they need to be seen six months so basically bi-yearly. Um, it's very, very important that we see these people with cancers or with skin damage because as you guys probably notice, like things pop up overnight or things change overnight and you're like, what the heck is going on? Yeah. So it's very, very important to even have those baseline exams. So normally, like I started probably seeing a dermatologist when I was 17 or 18, um, get a baseline. They check all my moles and such, kind of go through everything with me. If I have any additional questions on acne or anything like that, they definitely walked me through that. Um, but as of that, it's not like you're going to come see me every single year. If the baseline exam is clear and clean, then I see you probably by yearly or sooner if something else comes mm -hmm. up. All right. So it, it really is person to person. Oh, uh, absolutely. Person to person. Yeah. I, like I said, I have those 40 year olds that come in and ask about anti-aging stuff or what can I be doing for my skin? Mm -hmm. And then I have those 15 year olds that are coming in flooded with acne and that we have to get them on the right track because it's maybe it's hormones, maybe it's them, like you just don't know. I also have 40-year-olds that are coming with acne or 50-year-olds. Like mm -hmm. everybody has a different question about their skin or something just looks different or funky on it and they just want to come in and see what it's all about and that's fine. Yeah. Let's talk treatment uh, when we're talking dermatology and sure. skin problems uh, because uh, I mentioned the liquid nitrogen, uh, which is which is a classic. Uh, I, I know you can be a six-year, you can go, you know, pull both guns out at one time if, if you need to. Right. Uh, but uh, that's one treatment. That's one course that you take. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and the severity, uh, the frequency, all of those things play into that. But what are some of the advances in treatment that we've seen over the kind of last five or 10 years? Yeah. So for precancerous lesions, like what you're talking about, those actinic keratosis is what they're called. Um, liquid nitrogen is normally your first line. It's a nice quick, if you only have a few of them, you just kind of go zap, zap, zap and hit you everywhere. Get rid of them. You freeze down to a really deep layer of the skin. So it basically goes down and freezes and kills the precancerous cells. Mm -hmm. Um, then you take different steps. So some people that come in flooded with maybe them just on their forehead or just on their nose, maybe I can throw a cream at them and they'll be fine and they'll do treatment for either five days or three weeks. And then other people come in and I'm talking like full blown flooded on the face, flooded on the scalp, arms, everywhere, neck, you name it. They're the normally the people that worked outside all their life or had something where they were outside all their life. We have something that's called photodynamic therapy by um, Bioterra, and that is a one day, we like to call it a flash burn. So you come in in the morning, you get this cream on your face, you go away for three hours, you come back, it's 10 minutes on each side, and they're gone. That's all it takes. Yeah. So that is the most advanced treatment that we have right now. It's the most quickest. Um, most people like the idea of doing a one-day flash and burn rather than doing a five-day or a three-week treatment for sure. As of for everything else, so eczema, atopic dermatitis, that can come down to 
what kind of soaps you're using in the shower, what kind of lotions that you're using. Um, there's other treatments that you can do. We have that are like steroids, so topical steroids. It, there's always something. And then if it's really, really bad, you can go farther into, I'm sure you heard on the TV, like do Pixin or anything like yeah, that. Yeah. So you normally want to take baby steps. And like I said, each treatment plan comes down to every single person. What's different? The, I wouldn't do the same thing for maybe – you know, somebody that has mild eczema versus somebody that has full body. Mm -hmm. It would just depend. Or even with acne, I wouldn't do the same thing for people that have a few pimples on their forehead versus somebody that has pimples all over their face, all over their chest, all over their back. So it just depends. You need a good exam to know how aggressive you want to be with it. And it comes down to patient compliance too, how much you can trust them as well. We're talking with Kayla Gabaney this morning, IRMC, and we're talking about dermatology and the various treatments that are available. We've been talking a lot about sun damage uh, and and some other skin issues. Mm-hmm. As a general rule, with people who have uh, generally healthy skin, uh, are there certain creams that we should be using on a daily basis, certain moisturizers that we should be uh, being sure that we have in our cabinets? Yeah, absolutely. So like I said, our favorites as dermatologists are CeraVe. I'll tell you that. I mean, you'll go to the drugstore and you'll see thousands. You'll see Eucerin. You'll see Aveeno. You'll see all of these things, Nivea, all those things. Um, but we definitely lean towards CeraVe the most mm-hmm. um, just because we know that it works and we know that it's tested properly. Um, the thing that with CeraVe, though, is comes down is there's a thousand different types. There's lotions, there's creams, there's like Vaseline bases, there's ointments, there's all this kind of stuff. And that really comes down to what your skin is really like. As of um, for moisturizers on the face or anything like that, people of my generation, we come out, um, Dr. Wilson will always say this, we come out of the womb thinking we have to moisturize when we really don't. So that is very personal. It doesn't matter, really. Um, it just comes down to like, you know, do you need moisturizer or do you not? Like someone like me, I am an oil slick up here, like a slip and slide, literally. So I do not touch moisturizer with a 10 foot pole. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just, you know, it's just who I am versus people that come in too who are just like me. They're like, oh yeah, I moisturize and it makes their acne worse or it makes their face worse. And they ask all those questions, how they can get the oils off their face. And it just comes down to, you know, like we don't know this as the general population. So even coming in and getting, you know, tips and tricks on what to do with your hands or with anything, your body in general, for sure, is very important. I wanted to ask you about diet as well. Does diet really play into all of that much of uh, your skin health? Yeah, absolutely. So I actually studied nutrition in undergrad, so I'm not going to be tooting your horn over here or anything. Um, I did it at IUP locally and, you know, Things with diets, you know, the bad foods that we eat come down to just really the inflammatory properties of it. So, for example, they say, you know, carbs and wheats and that kind of stuff are very inflammatory or like simple sugars such as candies and white breads and all that kind of stuff. So they're just inflammatory to the body. So somebody with acne, we don't really like them to eat those kinds of things. Not We're, we're not going to stop them from eating it, of course, but we just kind of mention it to them. So anybody, you know, rule of thumb is what we like to say to people with your skin or your face in general is make half of your plate vegetables when you're looking at your dinner plate. One fourth of it carbs and the other one fourth of it could be protein. So chicken or whatever you're having that night, but at least half of it should be vegetables. And then some of that half could be fruits because they're loaded with antioxidants that fight those inflammatory properties in the skin or that fight that acne you know, all those kind of things. You get a lot of natural things from foods. You've done a great job today. <laughs> My goodness gracious. We're just about out of time. <laughs> Kayla Gabaney and IRMC Dermatology. So you are in Punxsutawney one day a week, mm-hmm. and uh, you're at uh, IRMC at Chestnut the rest of the week. Yes. People want to uh, come visit you at either of those locations. What should they do? They should just call and make an appointment. Um, they can call our basic call center, which is 888-452, and then you just type in IRMC. You can also call our office phone number, which is 724-459-1727. And you could also visit the website at www.irmc.org to get an appointment at any time. She is Kayla Gabaney. Nice job today. Thank you. Man, it is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS. FM and AM 1160.